So this talk is uh, a quick overview of different ways of applying dependency uh, injection techniques in C++. So what is a dependency injection? Dependency injection is basically a $25 term for a five cent concept. Yeah. Because it's basically, it's all, about, it's all about the construction. So on the left side, we can see the CP can talk, which is tightly coupled to dependencies, and that's no DI. On the other side, we have a DI in which we have a constructor when we pass all the dependencies through it. So we decouple the business logic and object creation uh, out of those guys. So that's very handy because the code is more maintainable and easier to test. And you can stop there, however, uh, you can be pragmatic and try to apply uh, more benefits to it. So I'm the author of Boost DI, which is not part of Boost, but I just call it Boost, why not? Uh, a library, <laughs> just because you can. Uh, so it's one other library, uh, it's generated uh, header, there's no Boost, no STL required. And the best thing about it is that it can deduce the constructors for you and uh, uh, apply them uh, as well. So if you have a CPP on talk and we have three uh, objects to inject, it doesn't really matter whether it's west or east const, DI will deduce it for you either way because it doesn't care. West though. It's west though, but it could be, it could be east as well. Uh, so on the left side we have manual DI and you can stop here, you can just create all the objects put them on the stack and you know, pass them to the CP contact uh, through the construct, uh, constructor, or you can ask the AI just to create it for you, which will be exactly the same result. So that's handy. But what about when we refactor the, uh, the, the class? So for example, room will be taken by a value reference, speaker will be a unique pointer because it's always a unique guy, uh, attendee will be just a list uh, or whatever. Uh, taken by reference. So on the left side, manual DI, we have to change the order, which is important, uh, create all the objects separately, move them or not move them, or pass them through. With DI, well, we can just say, just create those guys, doesn't really matter, DI will deduce that. So that's cool. Uh, we can also inject values, so if you have a vector of names, for example, and we have two guys, Len and Shay, and we'll inject them, uh, well, we can do that with manual DI, but we have to, again, change everything. Or we can actually do that with uh, DI, where we just bind the name to line and chain. And after that, we just create the CP contact, and that will do it for us. Cool as well. What about the abstractions? So we can have a speaker, which might be a virtual interface, or type BS type, or whatever we really uh, can think of, and pass it by the unique pointer. So obviously, for the manual DI, we still have to change everything and pass it through as always. With DI, we just can say, bind I speaker, which is an interface to anything which satisfies that guy, which will be the regular speaker. And yeah, DI will figure out for us and it will give us a compile time error if it doesn't with three lines that the concept is not satisfied. So that's cool. Uh, can we inject anything else? Well, we can inject even the template or concepts with DI. So here we can have a room which is uh, passed by the template, which is the value like perfect for writing whatever a value reference here. Uh, we just have to pass the name, which is the classroom or whatever we want, or the concept uh, room like. And after that, obviously with the manual DI, yeah, we have to repeat ourselves in a different way and pass the template and everything. With DI, yeah, we can just say bind the template type to the, the room type. And if you have a concept, we have to uh, satisfy that guy, so the ANAC would have to satisfy room-like concept. Uh, if it's not the concept, it's just a name, so the forward declaration, it doesn't really matter. We'll just try to inject it, and if it doesn't work, it will just fail miserably for us. Uh, what else we can inject? We can also inject mocks. So for example, here is an example with the GUnit, a different library in which you can ask it to create a class and all the mocks for us. So that's very handy for unit testing. You can just say, oh, create me a CP contact and every interface or any abstraction should be a mock. And after that, we can just do the expert call on that guy. Uh, we don't have to you know, deal with the mock method and anything else. 
And that's basically it. You can try it online if you want. Thank you.